don't do interviews the way a lot of people do interviews. Okay. I don't sit here with a list of questions. I don't have an agenda. I have conversations. Okay. And so I like conversations. This is meant to be a conversation, but you're going to do most of the talking. Okay. Because it's not All about right. me. It's it's about you. Okay. Uh, are there are there subjects that are important to you that you want to make sure we get to so I can kind of steer us there? Um. Well, I I promote the Filipino martial arts, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so that's part of my culture. Sure. And uh, but you know I I. Uh, I, 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 I want, I, I like the idea of having part of my culture to be able to bring people uh, closer to, okay. you know, to un the understanding of uh, the way we uh, think of the, our martial arts in the, the Filipino community, you know, and then okay. if they can understand that, then maybe they can understand our community better. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the whole idea we, is we to be to bring unity. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I, I'm from Stockton, California. And, Andrew, uh, are we rolling? Oh, we are. Oh, great. Okay. I'm from Stockton, California, yeah. and and and, uh, and uh, for many for many years, uh, Stockton was the was the like the mecca of, of Filipinos in the, mm. in the Filipino community. Um, uh, Filipinos came to the Summer King Valley to work in agriculture. They also came to Hawaii. So the two places were uh, Stockton and Hawaii. And uh, and uh, these young warriors uh, who, who are just field workers, um, they brought their martial arts with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they were practicing that in secret for many years. And then eventually in the early 60s, it started to come up. And the person uh, that was uh, uh, credited for bringing it out in stock, uh, one of the first ones to teach in the United States publicly, was Angel Cabalas. And uh, he, uh, uh, they said he officially opened his school in 1966 or 65, uh, but then he was still teaching way before that. Mm. And uh, so, but the difference was that he was teaching not not just in the Filipino community or Filipino children, he was teaching everybody. Hmm. He brought it out to the open. This is interesting to me because it's so much earlier than my understanding of Filipino martial arts being in, in the West, hmm. right? It, it seems like more, just the way people talk about it, it seems like a much newer thing, but... Yeah, I, I think it's just because it wasn't as popular as the other martial arts. I mean, you, you, you had... Uh, judo that became an Olympic sport. So, mm -hmm. and then people wanted to then people wanted to do karate, and then uh, you know, and then into the sixties and the seventies, and then you had Bruce Lee into kung fu, and yeah, but uh, yeah, so Filipino martial arts kind of you know kind of rare, yeah. and plus it's it's mainly yeah uh, it it it's it when you it starts with the weapon first, right? Yeah, so most of us practice with the weapon first, and then the then we transition into empty hand. So, uh, so it's a little different because it's it's it, that that part of the world, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, that was a, a bladed culture, and uh, so they knew how to use a blade. And uh, so, but for many years they would use, uh, uh, at least mostly in the Philippines, they would use a, a rattan stick for safety purposes. And uh, then it kind of built, came into a, so some of the style became more of a stick fighting and got away from the sword. The other ones still uh, maintain mm -hmm. some of that sword uh, mind, uh, mindset, how even did, with the practice with a stick. How did you get started? Um, you know, I, 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 grew up with a, uh, I grew up with a disability. I was born with spina bifida. Mm -hmm. uh, so my paralysis was... Uh, um, my left leg was paralyzed, um, and uh, I had a deformity on my right foot, and so I walked with a limp, and I could I couldn't run fast, mm -hmm. and uh, so I walked with a limp. Uh, when I grew up in the Philippines, the kids knew me; you know, they were my my cousins or my friends, so they just knew me as Carlito, who's got a limp, and uh, so 
in 19, because of political reasons and economic reasons in the Philippines, my parents wanted to move to the United States. Uh, my father was fortunate that he was born in Hawaii. Uh, my grandfather was part of those Filipino workers. Mm. And uh, he uh, worked in Hawaii, and then my father was born in Hawaii in 1925, but then his father decided to move back to the Philippines. So um, my, when my father turned 18, he uh, claimed his U.S. citizenship by birth, you, by, by birthright, mm -hmm. because he was born here. And that uh, made his children uh, automatic U.S. citizens. And so, um, so in 1972, we, we uh, uh, migrated here. And uh, how old were you at the time? Uh, I was ten, about ten years old. Okay. And um, so when we came here, I was, um, I was, a, I, was uh, I, I was a target man. You, you, you were know, Carlito uh, with the limp. You yeah, were Carlito Car with the limp. With the limp. Uh, and and, uh, and 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 I, I barely spoke English. Mm -hmm. I, but I dressed different, and um, I didn't know the culture. So. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I, w I was, I was, I was like a nose easy to pick on. <laughs> yeah. So, but, uh, but I, I just got picked on, got teased a lot and, uh, they would actually steal my lunch money. And, uh, what's, what's really tough is, uh, my parents were uh, low income. Uh, they worked in, in, in agriculture, uh, first, uh, and, uh, uh, so the first jobs were in agriculture. And so, um, they, they would, they used to give us these uh, lunch tickets. And then, uh, uh, and so that was our free lunch. And uh, so even though we have our free lunch, my mom would always give us a little extra so we can go uh, buy uh, buy some stuff at the, you know, they sell at the, at the, at the school. Sure. And um, this kid would steal my lunch money and, uh, and that's extra money that my parents, you know, provided for us and they worked hard for that. And uh, so, uh, so my, I used to just cry because I couldn't, you know, I didn't know how to fight back. And uh, then my sister, you know, told my dad and my dad. She and older? He, she's older. And my my father and his friends started teaching me how to box. And uh, so that was that was the beginning of my training. Uh, so so uh, you're, they had trained in the Philippines, they, they uh, I know uh, one one of my instructors, Roy Honor, uh, he he trained a, a little bit of boxing. Okay. Uh, he knew a little bit of boxing, so I don't know where he got that training from. Uh, but he was part of the uh, uh, the 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 Bowling Warriors in World War Two mm. uh, with the American Army, and they were the and so uh, so he uh, he uh, he yeah so he he knew. Iskrima from there, and uh, so he would train me. Uh, with, there were four of us in the backyard. Uh, they were brothers, uh, myself, and, and three brothers, and then we uh, we would train uh, with us with a stick, and then he would treat me. He would train me in boxing. Mm -hmm. uh, my father started to try to train me, but uh, we, we I, I couldn't. My father didn't have a systematic way of training, mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand. It, and he would get upset easily. So he kind of backed off and let Roy and Laura train me, and uh, so, um, so I, I it, it, then later on uh, after Roy and Laura passed away, um, I heard of Angel Cabalas, and uh, how old are you at this? Time? Uh, by this time, I was in high school, okay. and uh, and I I wanted to I wanted to train with him, mm -hmm. uh, and my. Oh, when Roy passed away, I was supposed to train with another teacher, but somebody uh, somebody killed a man, mm. and uh, so um, so I was going to train with. I wanted to train with Angel, and uh, my father told me no, and we Why? could just continue training ourselves because he didn't know Manong Angel. Okay, and uh, so uh, he only wanted me to train with people he knew. So I convinced him to meet with him, and they met, and they found they were. Uh, their fraternal brothers from different lodges, mm. and uh, so they they hit it off. And then my father gave me permission to train with him, and so that was from 1979, uh, and that's when I started training with Angel Cabalas in 1979. Well, yeah. you know that's that's a name that I've come to learn recently is 
kind of the name, kind of the um, the first. Pro it sounds like the first prominent name in the Filipino martial arts world in the U.S. Yes. Yeah. What, what did you recognize at the time? How significant no, that was? I, okay. I, I had no idea at no. all. Yeah. Uh, I, the first time I seen him was on TV. He was doing a demonstration, and I was just really. I just saw a small glimpse of what it was about, but I really, I, I recognized that it was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, it's, it's close up, it's, uh, it's uh, very little movement, and it's just fast. To me, it was just fast. Yeah. And when I was young, I wanted to be fast. And, uh, but it was a lot, it's a lot more than that. And, uh, but, uh, but I was really fortunate to, have started tra to start training with him. What was it like training with him? Uh, it was, um, it was, well, it was a, it was a, a, a formal school. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we had, uh, we had a, we had a ranking system. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, uh, we had, you know, we had, uh, t-shirts, uh, uniforms mm -hmm. and, uh, we had, uh, we bowed in, mm -hmm. you know, we, we have our culture of, of respect, showing respect. And, um, and then, then it was just, just outright training man it was it was hardcore yeah um uh and uh so you know you you Mano angel led the class and the older i mean the senior students they they uh they help mm -hmm. teach and then once you once you uh feel that once you're the you're assigned an instructor and once that instructor brings you brings you to to Mano angel and have you review and then uh, he, then he does the correction, and then once everything's right, then you pass your test and go to the next rank, and you just do that until you finish. Yeah. Uh -huh. Was the school exclusively people of Filipino descent, or no? It was all mixed. Mixed. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it was different, it, it, because for a long time they would only teach it in the community. Yeah. And this time it was just open to everybody. So we're we're talking uh -huh. about Angel as a, a visionary in more than one way, or at least ahead of his time. I, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just felt everybody should learn it. Mm. Uh, he wanted people to learn us, okay. uh, Filipino. Yeah. And so, when we think about your journey here, you know, what's kind of the next point where where we should talk about? Um, well, you know, it. Um, I, 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 I think that uh, you know, the, the, I think within uh, the, what's important for me. Um, uh, is is uh, is unity, hmm. uh, and so uh, you know. This uh, I think it's not exclusive to the Filipino martial arts, uh, but I I I love and practice Filipino martial arts, so I'm focused on that, hmm. and uh, and I I, I want I, I just wish that that we could that that all the different styles of Filipino martial arts could just work together hmm. more. And 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 so, um, so it was tough before. Uh, it, just within the Stockton schools, because there was a such a like a a rivalry for a long time with the schools, and uh, but with the with the with the next generation, there seems to be a little bit more openness now, and uh, so I'm hoping that we can do more activities to to promote that. Mm. Uh, and know some 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 people are promoting uh, uh, tournaments, and uh, me, I, I promote uh, seminars, mm. and uh, and uh, so so uh, I just want to focus on on more openness and more unity. Uh, so it's just a little, a little bit of a dreamer, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, but you know, if so somebody don't think about it, it's never going to happen, right? Right. Yeah. So we don't have if we can't unite everybody, at least if we can unite a good bunch. Yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's a big part of our mission too, right? That's yeah. why we why we do the show. We host events. We go to events because you know it's all martial arts. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, how long did you did you get to train with Angel? I trained with him along Angel from 1979 until he passed away in 19. He passed away in 1990, 1991. Yeah, and uh, so. Um, uh, I actually, I wasn't well, actually the last, I think the last, the last year, the last year, I wasn't really, I wasn't training with him anymore. 
uh, he, he was he started his health started mm -hmm. to fail uh, but I would still consult with him and he mm -hmm. would still review my students mm -hmm. Uh, but for most of that time, I, I offer, uh, trained with him until I graduated, then took some private lessons with him, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then uh, then he Then I went on to start teaching, and he would review my students okay. and help rank. Them. So you opened a school. I opened up a school. Okay. Yeah, what, was I, that something you had always wanted to do? Uh, not really. Okay. How did that happen then? Um, I think you. There was a time. Uh, uh, that you know, yeah. Sometimes, man, when you you know, uh, I would I would, I like to put it this way, you know. The, the, sometimes there's it, it, you know you you love something, uh, and and you you wanna you wanna you wanna protect it, mm. and uh, uh, but then you know then you also there's always this longing to wanna share it. You know, and and, and I, 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 and little by little, because I was, I was. Oh, here's really what happened. Um, in, in Manong Angel School at that time, he was training uh, what we call master's degree. Mm -hmm. Okay, these masters, the original masters, they were trained to be the fighters of the school. Okay. Uh, because at that time, we ch we would be challenged by another school, or we would challenge them, mm -hmm. and so he was afraid that if, if he wanted to make sure that that uh, if somebody challenges our school, that we know how to protect ourselves. And that if somebody challenges our school, we had adequate fighters. Mm. And that's where he wanted to have his elite fighters. And uh, being that I had the, the physical disability, I couldn't reach that level. So uh, physically for me. And so uh, I came to Manong Angel because um, I was going to get my leg cut off. Uh, because I had a bone infection, mm. and uh, they were going to amputate my leg, and so I approached Mano Angel and I said, "Mano, it's already tough enough for me. How am I going to to continue to participate?" And he gave me this man. He said, "You know what? I'm going to teach you how to teach. Mm. I'm going to teach you how to be a teacher." Mm. And so that's what he did. He broke down the system for me, taught me how to teach how to teach the system mm. from from every level. And uh, so that's that's how I that's how I got the the urge to teach, and uh, so I I wanted to start teaching uh, because I, uh, be, my friends would approach me to teach their kids, and uh, so I asked Manong Angel said Hey Manong I want to start a class, uh, can I start a class and then uh, and you review my students, I will be under your school and he said Yeah mm -hmm. so he gave me permission and I started teaching. So, yeah. We are, of course, recording this in video, but most of our audience actually listens, so they, they may be missing out on an important piece that I, I think we need to talk about mm -hmm. because it's something that a lot of people aren't necessarily going to uh, um, think can work for a career martial artist, and that is the fact that you are in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Sometimes <laughs> I, I've been to events where you know they, they're waiting for the teacher to be there to get there and i'm there i'm waiting too <laughs> and then they find out it's uh it's me in the wheelchair <laughs> you, you you made a comment yesterday uh there were some demos and and um someone else was going to teach some things and actually started to and then they deferred to you and, and you came onto the floor and you made a very simple comment that I think really told me just about everything I needed to know about you and, and how I was going to be able to approach this conversation. Cause you know, we'd set this up a little while ago and you rolled into the floor and said, yeah, I don't really do footwork. And you just kind of kept going with, and I, and I sat there and I'm trying not to die laughing cause I'm sitting in chairs in front of everybody. I'm trying to be respectful, but it, it told me a lot about <laughs> you and how you approach things. The reason I set all that up is because one of the things I love about martial arts is that we do a better job overall of meeting people where they are at. Yes, martial yes. arts is for everyone, but yes. I think for, for a lot of people, they might think, well, there's a line where it's too far, where I can't. Yeah, that's true. And, yeah. I, and I'd like you to yeah. speak to that. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the thing. I, I, I learned uh, that... Uh, 
you know, having a sense of humor helps mm -hmm. uh, because if you can uh, make people laugh, then they're more open to, to, to they, they see the human side of you. Sure. And, uh, and, you know, it becomes sort of a friendship. And, and uh, so you make a connection right away. And if I can connect with somebody, then they might be willing to listen to me. And uh, so, uh, and, and, it, it, and he, the thing is that they can look at me and say, oh my gosh, if he can do it, I can do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so for a long time, uh, I was, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 I kind of, uh, uh, I, I, I just stayed away from that. I didn't mm. embrace that uh, because, you know, I didn't want to be the, the, guy, the guy in the wheelchair mm. martial artist, right? Yes. You know, oh, he's pretty good for a guy in a wheelchair, right? right? You know, so I wanted to be a good martial artist. Mm. I wanted to be a good teacher. I wanted to be known for that. And, uh, and uh, but then more Did and more Did that make you work harder? Yes, absolutely. And uh, so uh, uh, then, you know, then all of a sudden I, I started, uh, people would approach me and say, oh my gosh, you really inspired me. You know, I like what you, you said today. And uh, so like, oh, hey, this is a good thing. This is a gift. And uh, so I embrace that and, mm -hmm. and I use that so, so I can uh, open doors and hopefully I can open more doors. And uh, I work hard and study hard so I can open more doors. Yeah. yeah, so. Doesn't matter the martial art, we at least have conversation about the self-defense aspects. Mm. Um, I, I know some folks who have various disabilities and you know they're in a variety of different martial arts. But it seems from my outside perspective, that learning how to swing sticks from a wheelchair is pretty darn applicable. It gives you range. Mm -hmm. It's something I, I've read accounts of people, you know, they just kind of keep them tucked on the side or something. There seems to be a good practical element there. I think so. Yeah. Um, I, you know, if you, if, if, uh, because there's different uh, levels of, of uh, uh, challenges sure yeah so uh, if you have a good core uh, and you can you can maintain you can sit up you know you have to know at what point will you you lose your 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 ability to stay up uh, so uh, you know so I have a good core mm -hmm. okay and uh, my hands work well and uh, so uh, and others don't mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, and I, I and I train people who have different different uh, different levels of, of, of uh, challenges, and uh, uh, we we always have a, a discussion. Mm -hmm. I don't want them to to uh, uh, I don't want them to be in this fantasy world uh, that if I do this, I'm going to be able to beat up a 200 pound guy. All right, so I know my limits, so I, I want them to understand their limits. Mm -hmm. uh, so. If they if 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 we're if we're training to for the uh, uh, because they want to train martial arts, uh, then we can train in a lot of areas, mm. even areas that's not applicable for sure. them. Uh, you know, so because if if they learn it, they can teach somebody else. They don't have to be a walking person to teach an able-bodied person. You know, so but if they think that oh, I'm going to be able to uh, to be able to defend myself with a 200-pound guy. Mm that's a you know the young and athletic you know then 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 you know i don't want that they you have to understand and so so i i know if we know what level of of uh of of, of you know of, of, if we know their level of challenges then we know then we can work on their strength mm. and uh the, but we have to understand the limits you know so i tell i tell i had this one guy he's from texas mm -hmm. i said Man, you're from Texas. Let's learn. How, I want you to go to a gun range and learn how to shoot. Sure. And uh, and so he did that. He went to a gun range and learned how to shoot because he can do that in Texas. Right. And uh, so I just want to be realistic about things, you know. And uh, but you, I, I agree with you. You know, with, a, with when you have a tool like a stick, then you you know you it's applicable. You know, as long as you're you're able to wield it. Yeah. You know? mm. A lot of people end up training in arts that are tied to their lineage, 
you know, and, and we're seeing more and more mm. familial styles come through, right? Uh, Irish stick fighting, mm. you know, is growing yeah. in popularity yeah. and, and I'm, I'm seeing, you know, I, I've got some Irish heritage and I, I, I'll admit, I feel a little bit of a pull mm. in that direction. And I see folks of Korean descent gravitating towards Hapkido or Taekwondo. And the, the, the hope as I talk to them is it gives them some understanding of where they come from. Mm -hmm. How does your training help you understand where you come from? Um, well, you know, one thing uh, of, of, about uh, the uh, Filipino martial arts is uh, you know, you, you're, you're part of this little uh, uh, micro community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's getting a lot larger. It's yeah. growing. I, I, I think Filipino martial arts is growing faster than, well, than know, any other martial yeah. arts segment. Well, what, what, what the point I was trying to make was that it, within the, mm -hmm. for instance, the Kabbalah Sarada Eskrim Association, mm -hmm. within the Kabbalah school, we have a little a community, mm -hmm. right? And and that's a culture that was that that uh, we had in our school, but it, it came from our Filipino culture, mm -hmm. and uh, so. Uh, and I understood that culture because I grew up in the Philippines. Uh, but I had friends who were born here, and because of because they were in our in our uh, Esprima school, they understood our culture better. Mm. You see, and uh, so. Uh, but I think it's normal for people to gravitate towards their culture yeah. and to study, you know. Uh, uh, their cultural heritage. If if I came and I trained with you, I trained in your school. What are some of those cultural elements that I might find? Um, I I hope uh, hard work. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and yeah, hard work and and uh, um, and I, I I don't know what the word is, but to to be able to. Uh, bring the inner part of you know that 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 thing you got in you that mm -hmm. want to 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 succeed and uh, to do, to do well. Yeah. I, would, I would like to bring that out of you, and uh, and then then you know to make you a better person. Yeah. So uh, I I I I I I like I love my students. Mm. Yeah. They're they're like my family. And uh, and I, I I sometimes students who's been away for a while they come back, and uh, uh, and I and how they they sometimes they express how their life changed because of being part of our community. Yeah. Uh, then you know that that makes me happy because I was part of their growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, if you come to me and 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 you were my student, you don't have to stay with me long. But if I have a little, uh, just a little piece that I that can in part with you, a uh, piece of, of, of what I think is good about our culture, then, and you have that now, I think that's a good thing. I agree. Yeah, so. I see a lot of people now uh, cross-training in Filipino martial arts there. You know, they start in karate or kempo, and they, they start bringing in some of these elements of Eskrima, Ar Arnis, Kali, and I'm wondering, have you looked outside? Sure. To yes. bring things into what you do. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, uh, I'm around. Uh, I have friends from different martial arts. Uh, they, we, you know, it, you know it, it, Stockton martial arts community is, is huge. We have we have the Chinese, we have Japanese arts, we have Filipino, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know, there's this uh, there's there it, there's more spirit of sharing when it comes to outside, you know. But uh, unfortunately, for a long time, which, which is changing though, mm -hmm. in the, within the Filipino community, there was a, 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 a resistance to share with other Filipino martial artists. Mm -hmm. But it, there seemed to be an openness of, you know, if I want to share with so a karate practitioner, and you know, we felt that was safe. Yeah, and uh, uh, so, uh, and and uh, so, so it was an opportunity to learn other things, man. How can I, how, what can I see? Uh, I always see something from other, other sources and, and I, I like to see where my style fits in with that. Okay, where, where can I find that? Where, you know, how, how am I going to use that? 
And uh, so uh, we call it borrowing. Yeah. Yeah. So I like that one. I like that one. I borrow that. <laughs> that is mine now. Yeah. One, one of my personal views is that, you know, kind of like religion, everybody's martial art is very personal. It's all a little bit different. You can, you can teach me. I could spend a thousand years learning from you and I'm still going to be a little different. I'm never going to be yeah. exactly yeah, you. And I different. think if that's true, then let's just embrace it. Yeah. You know, and of course we're, we're here at an event that is all about that. You know, we're at this, this martial arts symposium. Shout out. Thank you to Terry Dow for letting us do this. Awesome event. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. And so we're, you know, I'm, I'm going to these different things and, and I tend to go to the stuff that I'm the worst at. Right. I, I, I want to I want to be the worst one in the room because that's where I'm going to learn the most. Yeah. That's where you learn the most. Yeah. It's awesome, man. I get to be around uh, like Bill Wallace. My gosh, man. He's you know, the best. He's, He's the best. He, he was sitting right there. Yeah. About, about 45 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing guy. Yeah. He just left right now. He's got an awesome sense of humor. He, does. he comes up to me. He, he looks he comes up to me, looks down at me and he goes, hey. Keep kicking. <laughs> I love that guy, man. He, he is he is great. And you know, it's <laughs> we've talked about this a little bit on the show, but there seems to be a lot of overlap with very good martial arts instructors and a good sense of humor. Oh man, I think it helps. I, I yeah. Why do you why do you think that happens? Is it is it that people with a good sense of humor end up wanting to be teachers, or do they develop the sense of humor? because they are teaching? Uh, well, I just think that people with a sense of humor stand out more. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So there's all kinds of teachers. Not everyone have a good sense of humor. That's true. But there's a few that stand out. And the ones that do tend to have a good sense of humor. Yeah. yeah. You got to be able to laugh at yourself, man. Yeah. So. Life's too short to be yeah. serious all yeah. the time. We're not getting out of here alive. No. No. We all bought that ticket. That's right. Yeah, just waiting for the That's train. That's right. Ho ho hopefully it's late. <laughs> I want to keep that train late. Yeah. Okay. What keeps you motivated? Because, you know, let, let me say it this way. You don't have to be here. You're right. You left Yeah. Your, your side of the country. You left people that you love. You left your students, your school, and you're here. Um, I... I, I, I love the art and I love people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to share something with you, man. I, uh, uh, the last few years, uh, it's kind of big change for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I got sick really bad. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm wheelchair bound. And uh, so uh, I ended up getting gangrene on my bottom. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, so I, this was when COVID first started and I thought, I thought I had COVID yeah. and then, and when, and I didn't feel nothing. And, um, but uh, I didn't know that gangrene developed on my, the, my tissue, on my, like on my, my bottom, yeah. on my, my legs, in that area. And uh, so, uh, so they had to clean that up. Mm. And uh, so it was a long recovery. And um, then after after that, I got uh, COVID, and uh, and so what was worse is because uh, of my spina bifida, mm. I was only born with one kidney. Oh, and uh, my kidney was already diminished, and when I got COVID, it even got worse. And uh, so when I almost recovered from that. Do you have to go on dialysis? No, not yet. Okay. So uh, this part of the story. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, I almost recovered. I started to recover from COVID and then I got pneumonia again <sighs> from the flu, from the influenza. And that finished the rest of my kidney. And so so now I'm on dialysis, dialysis. three times a week. Wow. And, um, and so, uh, you know, having the realization that man our time is borrowed mm. and uh what's what's important to you and what's important to me is my family and uh and another thing important to me is how can i impact people's lives mm. and that's what i want to do i want to be able to uh impact more people's lives uh so uh i think uh 
I, I, I think I have something to share. And uh, uh, not just my martial arts, but my life experience. I yeah. want to be able to use that to help others. Yeah. yeah. So would you say you're ramping up travel and seminars? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm, I have other projects that uh, hopefully will result in uh, more doors opening. Anything you're you're ready to talk about? I, I, I'm writing a book. Oh, cool. Yeah, I'm writing a book. What's it about? Yeah, uh, about my life journey, my struggles, uh, my parents, mm -hmm. and our journey to America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just about overcoming man and winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just not too many people, uh, not enough people want to win. Mm -hmm. You know, and if they do want to win, they don't what, know what how. What does winning mean to you? Uh, winning is uh, uh, accomplishing the, the things that you want to accomplish. And it's different for different people. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, but there, there, there has, you have to have something that you want to work to motivate you. Because I can be an athlete in high school and win. And, and I get all that accolades in high school, and then that's it. So now the rest of my life, I'm going to let myself go because there's nothing else to work towards. A lot of the kids I went to high school yeah. with are like that. Yeah, man, that's that's only the beginning of the journey. That's that's where you learn how to win, yeah. you know? And you know how to win, so now use it for something else. Grab on something else. If it's not you, uh, you know, work on helping another person achieve theirs. That's what coaches do help others achieve their, their, their dream. Yeah. I, I like that word, coach, in the context yeah. of martial arts. I'm hearing more and more people use it because I think it, it better sets up the dynamic between an instructor and a student. If I'm a coach and I tell my students this, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm sensei, but I'm, I'm your coach. My job is to help you get the best out of you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Sounds like you do the same for I your students. So. I yeah. hope so, yeah. I'm working at it. Yeah. Yeah. As someone who's been teaching a long time, I imagine you do some things differently now than you did when you first started teaching. Yes. And I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I understand things better. Um, I, 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 it's easier for me to, to, to uh, bring something out of a student, mm -hmm. you know, if whatever they're struggling with, I can, I can, I, it's easier for me to, to help them yeah. solve that, to struggle through that, yeah. you know, but they, you know, yeah, it's up to them. I can't do it for them, yeah. but you know, it's just, I can help them coach through that easier. Yeah. I, I it was tough before, it was, before it was like, you know, and you know, so, but now I'm able to coach them out of it. Yeah. You know, it's just, Manong Angel was like that. Yeah. Yeah, he knew how to bring it out of you. Uh, and and uh, so it just took me a long time to be able to understand how he did it. Yeah, so uh, it's tough to be that guy. Mm -mm. But he was something else. Well, he was just, he was a great instructor, great, he was a fighter. Was what a, made him great? <sighs> well, for us, you know, uh, I think for you know, young boys, uh, he had a reputation as a, as, as a fighter. Mm. Uh, so that, you know, that, you know, that, that, that you, 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 we used to watch, you watch a lot of Western movies, right? The hero, right? Mm. And uh, that was Manong Angel to us. And, uh, and, and so, but then uh, as a, a, he was, he became more like a father to a lot of us. Uh, he was he he was very caring, mm. and uh, so uh, and and he knew how to, he knew how, because he was our our teacher. He knew how to push us. Mm. Uh, he knew how to push us to our limits and bring us to the edge, and 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 pull the greatness out of mm. us. Yeah, I know he did that for me. Yeah, and you do it for your students now. And I do. Uh, I'm working at being better at it. Yeah, but yeah, I I I think I'm I'm I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> Not quite there yet, but almost there. It's a, it's an ongoing journey, right? Yeah, it's until, an ongoing until the train journey. shows up. Yeah. We're still working on it. So, given that the audience that we have, you know, it's 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 global. Some of them do Filipino martial arts. Some of them don't. Most of them probably don't. 
what advice do you have for them? You know, they're, they're all at different points on their journey. You know, some of them are new. Some of them in, have been training, you know, 60, 70 years. What do, you, what do you want them to think about? What do you want them to take away from our conversation here today? Um, I think that if it's, 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 not to, it's not to quit on themselves, mm. right? It, 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 it's, it's, it's to continue to, to fail, you know? So people are afraid to, to, to fail. You know, you gotta fail to succeed. You gotta continue to do that. Set your, set the, your goals, uh, little goals and achieve those little ones. Uh, and, and little by little, you can achieve your big ones, you know. So, but um, you know, but don't, but don't, but but don't quit. People quit too easy, mm. and uh, so, yeah, don't don't quit. Just you know, if if you feel like quitting, go find somebody else to help you follow through. Find a good coach. Find a good teacher. Yeah, there there's so yeah. many quotes out there from very successful people, and they yeah. break all of their success down to, I just kept showing up. Yeah, just keep showing up. Yeah, that was me. Just kept showing up. Yeah, that, that, was, that was me too. Yeah. <laughs> my, my instructors say, you know, I, I started when I was very young. I was four. And after me, they said, you know, we won't take anybody who's under six. I just kept showing up and showing up. And, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't that good for a very long time. And <laughs> still not very good, but I've got a lot of experience at being okay. <laughs> yeah. Keep showing up. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. If people want to get a hold of you, um, I have a, a, I have a Facebook presence, okay. uh, Carlito Bonjock on Facebook, okay. uh, and uh, so I'm starting my Instagram, and cool. uh, we're, we'll we'll utilize more of the social media, uh, and so I have somebody that's uh, that's going to help me work oh, on great. that, great. and uh, so, but uh, but yeah, I'd like to get my book out there. And, is there uh, there a timeline for that? Um, I, I, you know, uh, uh, we're getting closer. Okay. Yeah, we're getting closer. Okay. So hopefully, you know, we, yeah. when we do these episodes and we put them out, we can always go back and update the notes that okay. go with them. So, you All know, right. folks, if you're, we're recording this in, in April of 24. So if, if you catch this later, you know, make sure you hit the show notes and maybe the book is out. Hopefully the book's out. Let us know when it's out and we'll drop links in for people to grab it. All right. Yeah. So yeah, uh, uh, Facebook. You can message me there on Messenger, uh, and then my everybody knows my phone number. Here you go two zero nine 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 two zero eight three two. You might yeah. get some calls and some texts. All right. Awesome. I, I I appreciate this. Thank you for doing this. This has been fun. And uh, yeah, any 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 final words for the audience to, to leave them? Um. Yeah, uh, keep smiling, <laughs> be happy. Uh, I think smile. Uh, if you greet people with a smile, they smile back. Yeah, too many grumpy people walking around, man. <laughs> I agree. Uh, so, yo, well, you know what? You know why I said that is because somebody I was three times this week. Somebody told me this weekend that I'm here. Oh, you have a good smile. You have a great smile. Yeah, so three different people told me that. You so, seem like a genuinely happy person. Oh, I am. Just yeah, yeah, very fortunate man. I have a wife that loves me, you know, a daughter that that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. so it's just I, I, our our family. It's just we're all close. It's great. And uh, so yeah, man, I, I just I love life. I'm loving life right now. Good. <laughs> Thanks for doing this. All right. Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Yeah.